Good evening and welcome students, family, and community members. Thank you to our talented band students from Sunderland Elementary School. As the principal of Sunderland Elementary School, I am excited to welcome you to tonight's performance, which is the culmination of many hours of hard work from our students and staff. Sit back and relax as our students take you back on a journey through time titled Sunderland Through the Ages. showcase a Native American legend about Mount Sugarloaf. May all first grade students begin to make their way to the stage. To begin the scene, our first graders will sing a song titled, Oh How Way. The Native Americans who lived in the valley thought of Earth as a mother and treated her with honor and respect. Oh How Way is a song that honors the Earth and all women ancestors. Please join me in welcoming the first graders. Wi-Fi signal. No luck. 
This is going to be the worst summer ever. It's probably best if we can't get online. I don't want to see how much fun everyone else is having. Are you children settled in? I'm so excited to have you here. We're going to have loads of fun. Uh, not to be rude, Granny. We love spending time with you, but what do you mean by fun? There is nothing to do here. Yeah, this town is just plain dull. You couldn't possibly mean Sunderland. Why, I have the best childhood memories growing up here. You'll see as you settle in, you will fall in love with my little town. Well, maybe it was fun back in the day, but if you ask me, there is nothing special about this town. It's just a bunch of shops and fields. <gasps> shops and fields? Why, this town is filled to the brim with amazing history. Didn't you see the remains of the big beaver on your way into town? Big beaver? Remains? Granny, what are you talking about? Come here, children, and I'll tell you the story. A long time ago, there was a big, huge beaver that lived nearby the Long River, which is now known as the Connecticut River that flows through our town. The big beaver was always eating the fish and whatever else he could find up and down the valley. <laughs> he was so massive that when food started to die out, the giant beaver started to eat the villagers that lived in this area to sustain himself. The very next day, Habomuk set out to confront the giant beaver at his den once and for all. Beaver, you must leave immediately or it will feel my wrath. The good people of the village do not live to deserve do not deserve to live in fear of you. Thank you. 
can we have all fourth grade students make their way to the stage? Granny's story will highlight Sunderland's patriotic spirit by introducing us to young Caleb Hubbard, a Sunderland patriot who responded to the call to Lexington. To kick off the scene, the fourth graders will first perform a song popular during the time of the Revolutionary War. The song is called Tom, He Was a Piper's Son. Fourth graders will also play their recorders with the help of the drum team. After the song, a third grade ensemble will perform our next scene titled Call to Arms. Welcome, fourth grade. I 
I'm sick and tired of the king's taxes. The Sons of Liberty had every right to dump the tea off the ship. Now old King George thinks he can close down the harbor and send all these lobster backs. <laughs> General Gage here to contain us? Think again. I hope those bloody backs come. <laughs> General Gage is making his way toward Lexington. They went to death terms of Park Hill by John Hitchcock and Samuel Adams. <laughs> Caleb and the riders left Caleb's field plow and all to answer the call. They rode to the Hubbard Tavern to meet with the other Minutemen to wait for the news. Fight them. The coercive acts imposed by the kings are simply intolerable. <laughs> the, the, the colony should be free to govern ourselves. Independence awaits us. Enough! <laughs> this is what we have been prepared for. I just hope my training will serve me well. Caleb and his men only had seven days of training. They had enlisted help from a British deserter to train them in the use of arms. Most of the men were just simple farmers and were not skilled in the art of warfare. However, their patriotism outweighed their lack of experience. In fact, almost everyone in the town was in support of the patriot cause. They had even driven out suspected loyalist spies from the town. Quiet men, news from the east. The British have retreated to Boston. The militia to be them at the North Bridge outside the Concord. <laughs> All right, men. Now is the time to test our souls. We will ride to Belcher Town, where we will gather more militia. Tomorrow, we march to Boston. <laughs>
to the 1800s. At this time, we invite all third graders to the stage. In this scene, we will learn about a woman named Martha Warner, who is one of six daughters in the family of Deacon Warner. Martha and her sisters were very strong, independent women who engaged in many activities of the day, including sewing, painting, singing, and dancing. To begin the scene, our third graders will perform a song titled The Singing School. In the 1800s, there were no music classes at school. People learned music when a singing master would ride into town on a horse and set up a singing school in a tavern, a church, or in someone's home for a few weeks. Everybody loved the singing school. It was a time to meet other people in the evening after all the farm chores were done. People would learn how to read music and sing beautifully. Some even learned to dance. After the third graders sing, a fifth grade ensemble will perform our next scene titled The Story of Martha Warner. Please welcome our third graders. Well, not exactly glass slippers, 
but there were white slippers involved, and her name was not Cinderella. It was Martha Warner. It was a cool spring day. The townspeople were busy with their morning errands, and the postmaster was no different. There was no FedEx in the 1800s, girls. Good day. I'm here to deliver a letter to Martha Warner. That will be I. Thank you, sir, and you as well. What in heaven's name is this about? You're invited to the great ball? Martha continued to read the letter, but her excitement began to fade to sadness as she realized who the letter was from. Oh, anybody but him! <laughs> Switch the ink well. Yes, sister. Martha sat down at her desk and began her response to the young man's letter. I am saddened to inform you that I will not be able to accompany you to the dance. My slippers are torn something awful, and the cobbler isn't open for a fortnight. Good tidings, until further notice. Martha Warner. There, go. The next day, Martha and her sisters were waiting at the stagecoach. Everyone was singing and dancing along to short meter tunes. One, two, three. from Boston? Here you go. She looks like something special. <laughs> Isn't that the boy who invited you to the great ball? Sadly, yes. I wish I had the heart to turn him down, but the last year means tied to my side like a steed. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Martha, hopefully this gesture will make our future together a reality. Now you have no excuse to refuse my invitation. Martha took the package from the young man. Thank you, sir. And yes, I will accompany you to the ball. we do have a future in fate. I undoubtedly believe we will. Aren't they just dazzling? A gift from God. Only if I had a bow to give me such nice presents. <laughs> I can't believe that actually happened. Yes, Martha Warner and her sisters were very admirable women. In fact, Martha bought the first encyclopedia ever owned in the town. She was also very famous for her singing. She took part in many of the teacher singing competitions. Singing competitions? Why, yes, Southern had its own, oh, uh, what do you call it? Pitch Perfect. What do you mean? Well, in cold winter months, singing school teachers would compete with rival schools by singing solos. Martha gained fame by singing the soprano solo of the Judgment Anthem. Wow, Martha sounds remarkable. Indeed she was. When a fever epidemic broke out in town, she sent her four children away to other towns and spent months nursing the sick back to health. She was quite a lady. See, I told you Sunday on this bill with interesting stories and amazing people. You were not kidding. Now off to sleep. You only have a few days left in our tiny town. We gotta make the most of it.
saying, I think I look a lot like the postmaster, don't you? <laughs> At this time, can all kindergarten students begin making their way to the stage? Life in Sunderland during the 1800s was hard work. Many people who would have known Martha would have most likely been farmers. To honor our Sunderland farming community, the kindergartners will sing an American folk song called The Garden Song. After all, without farms, what would we all eat? Please join me in welcoming our kindergarten students. Sunderland, one song that everybody knew and loved to sing was 
I'd like to teach the world to sing. The fifth graders will perform this familiar, popular song on voice and recorders. After the song, join us for an interesting dinner party performed by an ensemble of sixth grade actors. Spies be considered cool? 
Uh, yeah, what'd you do? I was just going to a dinner party. It was 1979, and my friend Mary Warner had been asked to host two Russian men who wanted to learn about life in America. So? Why would the government care about that? Because this was the time of the Cold War, and America and Russia were not getting along. Any interaction would be cause for some suspicion. As I was saying, I was on my way to the dinner party, and I noticed two black Cadillacs parked outside of the sugar shack. government-owned vehicles, and were probably checking the license plates of those who attended the party. Oh, I do love a good party! And a very good best parties ever! Uh, I can't be late to the party, but I think somebody's still following me! Oh, uh, bananas! I'm going to be late! It's five all 
the next performance. During the 20th century, the town of Sunderland welcomed people from various countries into their community. Many people came from Poland, bringing their wonderful food, customs, and music. The third graders will now sing a famous Polish song to honor the many immigrants who immigrated to Sunderland. Here are the third graders with Hey Sokoli. Sunderland Elementary School is very fortunate and privileged to have provided our town with this artistic tribute of our town's history. How about one more round of applause? I would like to give a special recognition to Mary Warner, and Linda Lopaka, whose stories helped to inspire this performance. Our guest of honor.
And finally, would everyone please pull out their programs as we sing one final song. This town is your town, written to the tune of This Land is Your Land by Woody Guthrie. Would grade two students please make their way up to the stage. faculty and staff and our students allowed this to experience the success that it did. Uh, first off, I'd like to recognize and thank the Town of Sunderland 300th Committees for putting this whole weekend together. Would the following faculty and staff members please come up to the stage? Cindy Novak, Ellen Von Flader, Joan O'Brien, Heidi Jeebo, Barbara Mullen, Lisa Zadwarden, Judy Schilling, Joni Frazier, Mary Jo Schiller, Megan Carr, Susan Matsui, Ryan Copeland, Vicki Palmer, Rachel Kidder, Catherine Rashad, Daryl Beamer, David Grace, Kevin Smith, 
and Lee Worley. member who played the largest role in making this night a success. Her inspiration, her energy, her commitment, and her dedication to Sunderland Elementary School is so impressive. We love her. Savannah Phillips, our fourth grade football teacher. 